News 46. Local coverage you can count on. Partners Medical Group. Our mission is to provide the highest quality of health care to each and every patient. With five locations in Pahrump, we are local doctors you know and trust. We want to thank you for choosing us. Quality care starts here. Car Studio. We clean inside and out. Cars, trucks, RVs, motorcycles, even boats. Wash, wax, detailing, engine cleaning. We do it all. Give the perfect gift with a Car Studio gift certificate. Mention this ad, get $5 off. Come to Car Studio in the Prump Nugget parking lot. Open seven days a week, 9 to 4. Hi, I'm Julie Hargis, the new manager down here at Car Studio. Come on down and see us. News 46 is brought to you by... Healthcare Partners, and Humana. News is also brought to you by Barry Levinson and Associates, Pahrump's Bankruptcy Center. When it comes to important matters like bankruptcy, call an experienced, compassionate attorney. Call the Bankruptcy Center of Pahrump. Call 775-727-4747. News is also brought to you by Tire Works Total Car Care, not your typical tire and service company. Guaranteed lowest prices on tires, your one-stop shop for all automotive needs. Call 775-751-6100 or 702-365-TIRE. Tonight on News 46, Donner Stabbing Defendant accepts a guilty plea agreement. And a deputy's hearing is declared a mistrial. And Prompt Valley High School opens its doors to its new facility. News 46 starts now. You're watching KPVM News 46. With Rick Vale and Rhonda Van Winkle. Local coverage from Deanna O'Donnell. News 46, local coverage you can count on. Good evening, it's Thursday, January 5th, 2012. I'm Rick Vale. And I'm Rhonda Van Winkle for News 46. And topping our news tonight, a guilty plea agreement was entered for Donner stabbing defendant Michael Maxwell Jr. The agreement does not admit to the murder and attempted murder of Michael Frazier and Antoinette Bell, the one of six defendants involved in this case, including his wife. Michael Maxwell signed an agreement with Nye County Assistant District Attorney Kirk Vitto admitting to solicitation to commit murder with use of a deadly weapon, which carries a sentence of two years and not more than 15 years and or fined up to $10,000, attempted theft, which he accepted a sentence of one year and not more than five years, and or fine up to $5,000, unlawful use of a controlled substance, he was sentenced to one year and not more than four years, and or fine up to $5,000, and theft of electricity, which brings Maxwell a sentence of one year and not more than five years, and or a fine of up to $10,000. Mr. Vito has stated that Maxwell looks to be facing approximately 30 years in prison. This is Zach Fuentes for News 46. William Tidmarsh, the former Nye County Sheriff's deputy, won't get a chance to face his accuser until October. This is because a mistrial was declared in court this week. The former deputy is facing three misdemeanor charges stemming from a February 8, 2009 incident in which a drunk female passenger that he was transporting home from a local bar later told investigators she was groped by him. Tidmarsh was arrested and later fired from his job. District Court Judge Kimberly Wonker decided to dismiss the jury pool and declare a mistrial. She heard from a potential juror and a witness that the potential juror told others in the jury pool that he distrusted police officers. He also admitted that he had done his own research on the case before the second day of jury selection. I'm Deanna O'Donnell for News 46. Dr. Skinner has been walking for years. He walks to bring awareness to the thousands of hospice programs all over the country. The last time he passed through Pahrump was 23 years ago. We didn't even have a, have a hospice here back then. 
we're here at the Prump Family Winery, and we ran into Dr. Colin Skinner, who is walking for hospice, as well as Shelly Hepler from Nathan Addison Hospice. We're going to tell you about Dr. Skinner's journey. Uh, I'm walking across the country. I've walked from North Dakota to here about 2,200 miles, mm -hmm. and I'm going through to San Francisco. I've done the journey before, so when I get to San Francisco, it'll be, 12, it'll be about 12,000 miles I will have walked altogether. Mm -hmm. And what I'm doing, um, I'm visiting hospices on the journey, and the message, message I'm trying to spread is that hospices are there to help people with serious illness, but to say that hospices need help too, that they need volunteers and support from their local community to help people with serious illnesses and to help as many people as they can. So that's uh, the message I'm spreading as I go across the country. And um, I know that we have Shelley Hepler here from Nathan Adelson Hospice. Are you visiting the hospices on your journey? Yep, um, I visited Nathan Adelson Hospice back in Las Vegas, mm -hmm. and now I'm in Pahrump. Now, I was here 23 years ago, and there wasn't a hospice here then, but there is now. And so it was great to arrive here today and see that there, you know, there is a hospice group here with nurses and volunteers and chaplains and um, other, other people you know, trying to help people with serious illnesses. And um, I think there's about, there's about 89 patients that you're taking care of, um, which is wonderful. So you know, 23 years ago, there wasn't a hospice here. There is and you were walking through 23 years ago? Yeah, I came through 23 years ago. 23 years ago, I um, stayed in a motel in Pahrump and then headed off through Death Valley. And, um, but now I'm visiting the hospice here and um, you know, seeing what they're up to. Not only um, a hospice, but a very active hospice and a very active community who really supports the hospice here and um, hopefully we'll be getting our own uh, hospice building soon. Inpatient unit, yes. Uh, we are so fortunate to have the wonderful community of Prump and Amargosa and Crystal that help Nathan Adelson Hospice, not only through our volunteers that come and help with the patients, but through our staff who are your friends and family, that we live here in the community and we love it and we could not do it without your support and with everybody in the community that helps us each and every day. Why did you personally decide to do this? Uh, I used to work as an orderly in a hospital back in England back in the 1980s and when I was there I saw people who were away from their friends and families who weren't getting the best possible care and seeing what they went through, maybe want to do a journey across Britain and America and to try and you know, uh, use a, a well, to, to walk and meet as many people as I could and try and get them to support hospices to give people the best quality of care that they can have and, make people, maybe, maybe, and to make people's lives as good as they can be. You and yourself as a physician, where do you practice? Uh, I'm not a physician as such. I've got a PhD in molecular biology, so I used to, uh, used to do genetic research, mm -hmm. and, uh, but I've stopped that now. Mm -hmm. And when I get back to England, I'll be working on conservation projects, improving green areas around where we live. Mm -hmm. So I used to be a genetic, um, uh, sort of, well, a genetic researcher, mm -hmm. but I've stopped that now. Where can people find out more about your journey? Do you have a website? Yep, I'm writing for the National Hospice Foundation and people can Google my name, Colin Skinner Hospice, and find out details about me or they can go to the National Hospice Foundation website which is nationalhospicefoundation.org forward slash Colin and that will take them to my blog about what's happening on the journey. And what a moving statement that Dr. Skinner is making, taking a journey for hospice and the journey through life can be so much more comfortable if you would give Nathan Adelson Hospice a call when you need them and also help donate and volunteer. This is Deanna O'Donnell for News 46. If you would like more information on Nathan Adelson Hospice, call 751-6700. And folks, as we head into our first break this evening, let's see what's coming up with Mr. Movie Phone. I'm Mr. Movie Phone. 2011 was kind of a stinker at the movies. How's the first week of the new year shaping up? Find out with my weekend movie preview next. News 46 is brought to you by... Southwest Medical Associates. Their healthcare center is now open in your neighborhood. Southwest Medical Associates. Now that's powerful medicine. Happy New Year at the movies, everybody! Or maybe not so much! 2011 was a crummy year at the box office, and 2012 isn't exactly starting out like a woman possessed! Or is it? As another exorcism movie hits theaters, 
the devil inside. I found four voices on the recordings. What does that mean? Multiple demonic possession. Please help my mother. The movie follows a woman named Isabella whose mother is locked away in a psych ward for brutally killing three people. 20 years later, Isabella travels to the insane asylum to find out that her mother isn't possessed by one, but four demons. The real deal? Really? Four demons? Just the more demons, the better? This is how we have to start the new year? The only savior here is that there was no screening for critics, which I'll consider a late Christmas present. But if you spend the 12 bucks, I fear the devil made you do it. I'm out. Heading into more theaters, a boy is determined to solve a family mystery in extremely loud and incredibly close. Where are you? Uh, I'm on the 106th floor. I'm, I'm gonna be fine. I'm gonna try to call you again in a few minutes. Please just stay talking to me. Two years later, Oscar is still reeling from his father's death in the September 11 attacks. When he finds a key hidden away, he sets out to find the object it unlocks, convinced that it will bring him closer to his father. Starring Tom Hanks, Sandra Bullock, and Thomas Horn. The real deal? Look, this is a well-executed movie with a lot of drama, but it's a 9-11 tearjerker that misses the mark. Extremely loud and incredibly close feels extremely calculated and incredibly manipulative. I'm out. Now remember, for your showtimes, your tickets, my six-second review, so much more, go to moviephone.com. So have a great weekend, everybody, and I'll see you at the movies. That's a wrap! All right, and now we have some updates for you regarding two of the accidents that recently took place on Highway 160. Tonight's accident report is brought to you by Stovall & Associates. Don't expect insurance companies to have your best interest in mind. Stovall & Associates cares. Let us help you if you have been involved in an accident. Single vehicle rollover that occurred on Highway 160 just south of town yesterday afternoon. Both occupants are out of the hospital. The driver was treated and released from the local hospital here, Desert View, and the passenger was flighted into Las Vegas and has since been released as well. The accident that occurred on Tuesday night in front of Spring Mountain Motorsports with the woman and her four-year-old daughter, the woman was ejected from the vehicle. The daughter only sustained minor injuries. The mother and driver of the vehicle is still in the hospital in Las Vegas and is listed in critical condition. This is Deanna O'Donnell for News 46. Lear Dante has been singing since she was a child. Well, in fact, she still is a child. You can catch her performance right here on our show, Young at Heart, and coming soon to Las Vegas. Yes, absolutely. I've been singing since I was 10 professionally, and I started singing when I was 4, like, just to play around, but I started really when I was 10 professionally with performances everywhere, around Vegas, in and out of town. Out from deep within, it's only beginning to find belief. Oh, the time has come for my dreams to be heard. They will not be pushed aside or turned into your own. All cause you won't I'm 15 now. And I know that you're looking at possibly signing a record deal tomorrow, actually. You're, yeah. you're having a meeting. Yeah, we're having a meeting tomorrow, so I'm crossing my fingers. Hopefully, they'll take me. If not, you know, just keep on doing what I'm doing. Are you here locally or are you in Vegas? Um, I'm here in Vegas, mostly. I do a lot of performances in Vegas, but kind of slowing down because I'm working on my album and stuff like that. And I know that you're going to have an album coming out in the spring. Yes, it's it's got all type of different music, as in pop, reggae. There's like different people I work with with my music that we're planning on adding onto my album. Mm -hmm. But um, there's a lot of different stuff, and I think you guys will definitely like it. Do you play instruments too, as well? I I used to play piano. I stopped playing for a while, but I know my chords, so I consider. Yeah, I think I know how to play the piano. You know. Are you writing your own stuff? Yes, I do. I write my own stuff. Some people, um, Donnie Lyle and Kevin Crump, they send me music. They used to work with like Britney Spears and uh, Chris Brown, all types of popular people. So 
they send me out songs to work on. I know that May 5th you're going to be performing at the Susan G. Komen Foundation in Las Vegas on Fremont Street. Yes. Um, I Actually, I always do that pretty much. I'm endorsed by Susan G. Komen, and I have another singer that's going to be performing with me. Her name is Stefania, and I think it's going to be a really great show. And March 25th, the Finley Cadillac through the years. Yes, I've done that last year. I had really, I, I had a lot of fun because I got to see all these cool cars, you know. So that's going to also be a great performance, too. I'm really excited for that to come up. I know that you're going to be on Young at Heart, and people, of course, can see your performance yeah. on there as well. But if people want to check out your music, do you have a MySpace, Facebook? Um, I have a MySpace, same old thing, Lea Dante. And then I have a Facebook that is mostly managed now because MySpace is kind of low. But um, Facebook, Lea Dante. Can you spell that? L E capital A Y E R Dante D A N T E. Parents and the community all gathered last night to see the new high school building. We spoke to a very proud principal, Mr. Max Buffy. Ah, uh, yeah, it's just great. Uh, we've got I don't know how many people have come in tonight. I'm going to pick it probably 700 at least. Uh, a lot of students, a lot of parents coming in, looking at the new building. A lot of favorable comments from them. A lot of questions. Uh, but we will be up and running for tomorrow morning. This is exciting to have this kind of uh, new facility for you to head. It's, it's a facility that I've been to some colleges that don't have facilities like this. So it's, it's a wonderful facility. Our students deserve it. It's about time. Uh, and the students are excited. I mean, just to hang out with these great kids and listen to them. They're excited about the new building. So I'm excited just uh, by association. And I think people need to come in and see you. It's a great facility, and uh, it is available if people want to use it for activities on weekends and stuff. Uh, we do have a small rental charge, and we'll be working that out with the superintendent. Uh, and, uh, you know, that money stays in the school. I get to use that for school improvement on our buildings, and it does come in handy. So um, it's a real nice facility. We've already talked about having uh, winter homecoming here. Uh, we'll be able to decorate up the courtyard, and I'm going to tell you, I, there's, there's not a school in Vegas it's got anything on us. And now here's Deanna O'Donnell with your news across Nevada. I'm Deanna O'Donnell and this is your news across Nevada. The National Park Service is waiving entrance fees at more than 100 national parks January 14th through 16th in honor of Martin Luther King Jr. Day weekend. The National Park Service website says the fee waiver includes entrance fees, commercial tour fees, and transportation entrance fees, but other fees such as reservation, camping, tours, concession, and fees collected by third parties are not covered by the fee waiver unless stated otherwise. Other fee-free days scheduled for National Parks for 2012 are April 21st through the 29th, which is National Park Week, June 9th, Get Outdoors Day, September 29th, National Public Lands Day, and November 10th through 12th, which is Veterans Day weekend. Many national parks are free to enter year-round. An expo beginning Thursday in Las Vegas plans to host Sir Richard Branson and former President Bill Clinton as speakers. The Hearing Innovation Expo 2012 is slated to host almost 3,000 healthcare professionals at the Cosmopolitan of Las Vegas. Event organizers said Branson is slated to speak at the event's first day at 10 a.m. President Clinton is expected to cap off the event with a keynote address at 5 p.m. on Saturday. Organizers also said courses throughout the expo will introduce specialists to advances being made in hearing technologies. They said this is the first of its kind event to happen internationally. Organizers of the Reno Air Race that was the site of a deadly crash in September have decided against canceling the event and are already selling tickets for the 2012 competition despite the wreck that killed 11 people and injured more than 70 spectators on the edge of the grandstand. They do not know whether there will be changes to the format of the 49th annual event which is scheduled for September 12th through 16th at the Reno Stead Airport. They are enlisting a panel of experts including former National Transportation Safety Board Chairman Jim Hall to help ensure its safety. The panel is to report back in 90 days with any recommended revisions. Clark County Commissioner Chris Junkiliani introduced an ordinance to the commission that would restrict animals on public and private sidewalks and pedestrian bridges on Las Vegas Boulevard from Sahara Avenue to Sunset Road. Animals exempt from the restriction would be service animals, 
pets of legal permanent residents living next to the strip, animals possessed by the government, and animals permitted to be there for parades, special uses, by a licensed business or other government operations. Panhandlers didn't make the cut. Some ask how the ordinance might affect tourists who bring their pets with them and decide to take a pet for a stroll on the strip. This is Deanna O'Donnell with your news across Nevada. That dog was so cute. That dog was very cute and very <laughs> cold, apparently. Yeah. Yes. Did you notice it got a little colder it last did. night? Last night it did seem My heater a, kicked a on. bit colder. It really did. And hopefully that's not going to con you know, continue to be a problem because I don't mm -hmm. think I can handle the heating bill that seems to be creeping up on me right now. Me, me either. So we're going to check in with Zach after the break and see if maybe this cool might go away just a little bit. News 46 weather is brought to you by Healthcare Partners Medical Group with five locations in Pahrump. Local doctors and professional staff providing total care from infancy to seniors. News 46 weather is also brought to you by your local dairy farmers. Dairy products are very important in maintaining a healthy body. For more information, you can visit their website at nevadadairycouncil.org. News 46 weather is also brought to you by Humana. Welcome back to News 46. I'm Zach Fuentes here with your weather. Today we had another nice day, just like yesterday. We had sunny skies. Our high went down a little bit at 69 degrees, and the winds were coming out of the south-southwest at 3 miles per hour. Gusts were only at up to 6 miles per hour, and our pressure is still holding steady there at 30.31. The UV index is at 3 moderate, and it looks like it's going to stay that way for a little bit. Humidity was at 19%, and our sunrise was at 6.56 a.m., and our record wasn't that long ago back in 2003 at 71 degrees. Tonight, it looks like we're going to have clear skies once again, a low of 33 degrees, and the winds are going to come out of the north-northeast at 3 miles per hour. Our gusts are going to go down just a little bit at 5 miles per hour, and our humidity is going to be at 34%. Our sunset was at 4.43 p.m., and tonight's record was 12 degrees back in 1950. Tomorrow, it looks like we're going to continue with our trend of sunny skies. Our highs are going to go down just a degree there at 68 degrees, and our low is going to be at 32 degrees. The winds are going to come out of the south-southeast at 3 miles per hour, and our gusts are going to remain at 5 miles per hour. UV index is also going to remain at 3 moderate, as well as our sunrise, which is going to be once again at 6.56 a.m. Tomorrow's humidity looks like it's going to be at 23%. And now taking a look at our seven-day forecast. Friday and Sunday looks like it's going to be Sunday, but Saturday is going to bring us some clouds just to break it up a little bit. Monday, Tuesday as well will be Sunday. And then Wednesday and Thursday, we're going to have some clouds. Wednesday more than Thursday. But our 20% chance of rain that we were looking at yesterday is gone, so that's good. Um, our highest high is going to be at 68 degrees, and our lowest low is going to be at 28 degrees, so not too bad. And today's worst weather was in Cat Mountain, New York, where they had snow showers. Back to you. So, yeah, it's going to be freezing. That's right, folks. Your heating bill is not going anywhere, except up, maybe. And don't forget, of course, the five P's of Pahrump. Looks like we're below freezing all week long. Congratulations to us. <laughs> I'm telling you. All right, well, this weekend is Shadow Mountain Feed's Low Shot Clinic from 9 a.m. to 2 p.m. And the community assessment report is being presented on January 17th at the Prompt Nugget from 6 to 8 p.m. The public is, in course, invited to attend. And we want to make sure, if you're interested in having some pizza tonight, give Domino's a call and ask for the KPVM News Special, 751-3030. And folks, that's going to do it for this edition of News 46. I'm Rick Vale. I'm Rhonda Van Winkle. From everyone up here in the Hill of KPVM, we wish you a safe evening, and we'll see you here again tomorrow night. Until then, good night, Prom. Good night.